CS407 Numerical Analysis, Section 7.3 Adaptive Runge Cutta and Multi Step Methods. So, for the initial value problems that we've been looking at, you need to estimate the precision attained by the computation. Usually, you have some prescribed error tolerance, and the numerical solution shouldn't deviate from the true solution beyond this tolerance, as is the case uh, for almost all numerical analysis. Once you select a method, the error tolerance will also dictate the largest allowable step size. Of course, uh, this is more difficult than it appears on initial glance. Even if we consider only the local truncation error, determining an appropriate step size may be difficult. Moreover, Having a small step size is needed for one portion of the solution curve, whereas you might need a larger one uh, somewhere else in uh, calculating the curve. So this leads us to adaptive runge cutta methods, and various methods can automatically adjust the step size and algorithms that solve initial value problems. So consider the fourth order runge cutta method from the last section. To advance the solution curve from t to t plus h, we can take one step of size h or take two steps of size h over 2. If we don't have any truncation error, then the results will essentially be the same. The difference in the numerical results, if there is any, can be taken as an estimate of the local truncation error. If this uh, difference is in a prescribed tolerance, then h is satisfactory as a step size. If the difference exceeds the tolerance, we have the step size. We cut it in half, and if the difference is much less than the tolerance, we double the step size. The procedure just outlined is pretty easily programmed, but it can be a bit wasteful of uh, computing time and is generally uh, not recommended. So, the runge cutta felberg method of order 4 is a little bit more sophisticated. So basically you have the scheme here and you can see that these are some uh, nasty fractions on the order of quadrature type formulas. Uh, and it does require one more function evaluation the classical runge cutta method of order 4. So just taken by itself it's of questionable value. However, with an additional calculation in K6, we can obtain the fifth order runge cutta method. And the fifth order is given there at the bottom. The difference between the values of x of t plus h obtained from the fourth order and fifth order procedures is an estimate of the local truncation error in the fourth order procedure. So this actually becomes valuable. So six of function evaluations give a fifth order approximation together with an error estimate. Let's look at how the pseudocode to accomplish this uh, can be put together. It, you can find it on page 321. It's called RK45. So here's RK45. Now it looks uh, pretty complicated compared to uh, things that we've uh, done before. However, it's uh, fairly straightforward. It just has more lines and involves a lot of assignment statements and uh, function evaluations. Of course, the fractions in these higher order K terms are quite nasty too. Uh, when you're actually coding this, you're going to want to make sure that your divisions uh, convert easily to type double. You may also want to consider optimization techniques such as assigning numerical values to the coefficients with decimal expansions corresponding to the precision of the computer being used. That's so the fractions don't need to be recomputed at each call to the procedure. Uh, we can use this RK45 program in a non-adaptive fashion, such as in the following example driver program. So here we actually want to uh, test this out uh, with a problem that's similar to the uh, one that we did in uh, section 7.2 with uh, f of x is equal to 2 plus x minus t minus 1 squared. Here we print the uh, error estimation in each step. Uh, however, we can also use it as an adaptive procedure since the error estimate can tell us when to adjust the step size to control the single step error. Note that we do need to code the external function f, and f is dependent on t and x. So we can also do a simple adaptive procedure. In the RK45 procedure, the fourth and fifth order approximations x of t plus h, say x4 and x5, are computed from the six function evaluations. In the error estimate, epsilon is equal to the absolute value of x4 minus x5 as known. From user-specified bounds on the allowable error estimate, the step size h is doubled or halved as needed to keep epsilon within these bounds. 
and the range for the allowable step size H is also specified by the user. You'll need to set the bounds carefully so that the adaptive procedure does not get caught in a loop, trying repeatedly to have and double the step size from the same point to meet error bounds that are too restrictive for the given differential equation. So here's the adaptive procedure summary and it's listed as an algorithm and uh, we begin by running the RK45 routine in step one. Next step two indicates that if the error estimate is inside the bounds we don't change anything. Step three says that if the error estimate is less than the lower bound go with the larger step size. Step four says that if the error estimate is greater than the maximum bound go with the smaller step size. Finally step five checks to make sure the step size is kept within the appropriate bounds. Having our algorithm, let's put together the pseudocode. And here is the Runge-Kutta adaptive uh, method. This procedure um, has a, a lot of parameters, and uh, we'll start with f, which is the function f of t of x, the differential equation. t and x contain the initial values. h is the initial step size. tb is the final value for t. IT max is the maximum number of steps to be taken in going from A equals T of A to B equals T of B. E min and E max are lower and upper bounds on the allowable error estimate epsilon. H min and H max are bounds on the step size H. I flag is an error flag that returns one of the following values. Zero for a successful march from T sub A to T sub B. And one for maximum number of iterations reached. So returns a, an error flag for us. On return, t and x are going to be our exit values, those get passed back to the main program, and h is the final step value, step size value considered or used. In the pseudocode, notice that several conditions must be checked to determine the size of the final step, since the floating point arithmetic is involved in the step size varies. As an illustration, the authors suggest repeating the computer example in the previous section using our K45 adaptive, which allows variable step sizes instead of RK4 uh, to compare the accuracy of these two computed solutions. Let's take a look at an uh, industrial example. So, a first order differential equation that arose in the modeling of an industrial chemical process is given as follows x prime is equal to a plus b sine t plus c times x, and x0 is equal to 0. A is equal to 3, B is 5, and C is equal to 0 0.2. So this equation is amenable to solution techniques of uh, calculus, and in fact you can get an analytical solution, in particular the use of an integrating factor. However, the analytic solution ends up being pretty complicated and a numerical solution may be preferable. To solve this with runge kutta we only need to identify the function f that appears in the general description. We can now go about making a brief pseudocode that solves this equation. So here is the brief pseudocode for solving the equation on the interval 0 to 10, with particular values assigned to the parameters in the, co in the routine. We use this in conjunction with the adaptive runge kutta method, RK45 adaptive. As usual, we need to define the differential equation function in a separate external function that we can then call from uh, RK45 adaptive and calculate the uh, values. Uh, as a result of this it obtains uh, x10 is equal to 135.917 and the output from the code will be a table of values that can be sent to a plotting routine so you can see how the differential equation changes over different values of t. Adams Bashford Molden formulas are a strategy in which numerical quadrature formulas are used to solve a single first order ordinary differential equation. The model equation is x prime of t is equal to f of t x. We suppose that the values of the unknown function have been computed at several points to the left of t. For example, t minus h, t minus 2h, t minus n minus 1 times h, and now we actually want to compute x of t plus h. Using calculus, we can write out a formula for getting the integral from t to t plus h. And we have uh, suitable numerical integration formulas as a result of this. Now, the simplest case of such formula will be 
for the interval 0, 1. And we'll use values of the integrand at point 0, minus 1, minus 2, all the way to 1 minus n in the cadence of an Adams Bashforth formula. In other words, this thing is a uh, mouthful. Once we have a basic rule, change variable will produce the rule for any other interval. So we can change the intervals through appropriate substitutions. Let's find a rule of the form, the integral from 0 to 1 f of r dr is equal to c1 f0 plus c2 f minus 1 all the way out to cn f to the 1 minus n. Now there are in coefficients c sub j. We know from interpolation theory that the formula can be made exact for all polynomials of degree m minus 1. So it suffices that we insist on integrating each function 1 r r squared r to the m minus 1 exactly. So what we do is we write down the appropriate equation and this ends up being a linear system AU is equal to B of n equations and n unknowns. The elements of the matrix A are A sub i j equals 1 minus j raised to the i minus 1 and the right hand side is B sub i is equal to 1 divided by i. When we solve the for the coefficients we get uh, the following values 55 over 24 minus 59 over 24 37 over 24 and minus 3 eighths. Uh, using another quadrature rule we can get 9 over 24, 19 over 24, 5 over 24, and 1 over 24. Now to get the atoms molten formulas we start with the quadrature rule of the form integral of 0 to 1 gr dr is approximately equal to the sum from j equals 1 to n c sub j g of the, the function g applied to 2 minus j. The distinction between the two quadrature rules is that the one that involves the value of the integrand of 1 and the other does not. So, how do we arrive at the formula for the integral from t to t plus h g of s ds from the work already done? Well, basically, what we do is we use a change of variable from s to small sigma, given by s equals h times small sigma uh, minus t. We also consider t as a constant. The new integral will be h times zero, or h times the integral from zero to one g of h sigma plus t d sigma, which can be treated with either of the two formulas designed for the interval zero to one, and those are given below. Uh, the method of undetermined coefficients used here to obtain the quadrature formulas does not by itself provide the error terms. That we would like to have. An assessment of the error can be made from interpolation theory because the methods considered here come from integrating and interpolating polynomial. You can experiment with some of the Adams Bashforth Molden formulas in the computer exercises. Sadly, we'll see these again in the next section. So, the exact solution to an initial value problem is a function x of t that depends on the initial value s. So, we write x of t, comma s. The differential equation gives rise to a family of solution curves, each of the cor each corresponding to one of the values of the parameters. For example, x prime is equal to x, x of a is equal to s, gives rise to a family of solution curves that differ in their initial values. x of a is equal to s. Few such curves are shown in the figure. The fact that the curves there diverge from one another as t increases has important numerical significance. Suppose, for instance, that the value s is read into the computer with some round-off error, that is, our initial value has round-off error. Then, even if all the subsequent calculations are precise and no truncation error occurs, the computed solution is going to be wrong. An error made at the beginning has the effect of selecting the wrong curve from the family of all solution curves. Since these curves diverge from one another, any minute error made at the beginning is responsible for an eventual complete loss of accuracy. This phenomenon is not restricted to errors made in the first step, because each point in the numeric solution can be interpreted as the initial value for succeeding points. For an example in which we don't get this difficulty, consider x prime is equal to minus x, and x of a is equal to s. These solutions are x times s e to the minus t minus a, and as t increases, these curves come closer and closer together. Errors made in the numerical solution here will still result in selecting the wrong curve, but the effect is not as serious because the curves coalesce. 
At any given step, the global error of an approximate solution to an ordinary differential equation contains both local error at that step and the cumulative effect of all local error errors at all previous steps. For divergent solution curves, local errors at each step are magnified over time, and the global error may be greater than the sum of all local errors. In the figures, the steps in the numerical solution are indicated by the dots, connected by the dark lines. Also, the local errors are indicated by small vertical bars, and the global error by a vertical bar at the right end of the curves. So for this one, you can see the global error becomes very small, whereas for the uh, previous slide, the global error became quite large. So for the general differential equation, how can the two modes of behavior, convergence and divergence, be distinguished? Well, if the partial derivative of f with respect to x is greater than delta for some positive delta, the curves diverge. If f sub x is less than minus delta for some positive delta, the curves converge. So consider the differential equation x prime is equal to t plus tangent of x. The solution curves diverge from one another as t goes to infinity because f, the partial derivative of f of tx with respect to x is secant squared x, which is actually greater than 1. So. Next time we'll take a look at methods for first and higher order systems.